to be when people started um, building mathematics on set theory and on set theory and logic, um, they were very optimistic. Um, so you may have heard of uh, Russell and Whitehead's Principia Mathematica. You will have heard of um, you may have heard of Frege's um, uh, Foundations of Arithmetic. Um, there was an idea floating around that maybe you could reduce mathematics to pure logic. You could reduce set theory to pure logic. You could write down a list of axioms that were self-evidently just logically true and deduce everything from them. Uh, it was, But Russell made the unpleasant discovery that that wasn't true. So this is Russell's paradox. What does Russell's paradox say? Well, um, the background to it is that um, set theory is about building sets. So we have the set of all real numbers, the set of continuous complex valued functions, set of all square integrable functions. Um, if you've got a mathematical property phi, such as being a real number, we want to look at we want to be able to talk about the set of all things satisfying that property, the set of all real numbers, and so forth. Well, why not? Why don't we just go ahead and do this? Well, this is the set that gave Bertrand Russell a lot of sleepless nights about 120 years ago. Let us consider the set of all sets that are not members of themselves. So, capital D is the set of all X, such that X is not an element of X. So, the set of natural numbers and is, is an example. The set of natural numbers is not a natural number. Uh, the set of square integrable functions is not a square integrable function. OK, is D a member of itself? Well, D is a member of D if and only if it satisfies the criterion for membership. And what is the criterion for membership? Well, that D should not belong to D. Oh dear! D is, uh, is a member of itself if and only if it's not. We have a logical contradiction. The existence of D is logically inconsistent. OK, what do we do now? Well, the answer is we be cautious. We, are, we have to be cautious about when we allow ourselves to say that a set exists. And that is a very big deal. OK. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have a list of axioms, most of which will say when we allow ourselves to think of a set as existing. And um, this set is going to be, and it's going to have to satisfy two opposing requirements. It's going to need to be powerful so we can prove lots of stuff but not too powerful so that we don't get to prove 0 equals 1 or the moon is made of green cheese or something like that. OK. There is... Um, OK, so we, we write down a set of axioms. We're going to be using the ZFC axioms, which are one of the standard sets. Um, there's an additional problem. Uh, the additional problem is that we'd really like to be sure that our our cautious set of axioms really is logically consistent. Well, what's wrong? What might go wrong with that? Well, uh, this is nasty surprise number two for set theorists. Uh, Gödel's second incompleteness theorem, uh, not on the syllabus of this course. Um, it tells us uh, it, um, it, its implication for set theory is that if we have a nice set of axioms that we want to use for set theory, uh, we'd like to prove that it's consistent, but um, we can only prove that it's consistent if it isn't. Uh, point being, of course, that from an inconsistent set of axioms, you can prove everything. So if theta is inconsistent, you can prove everything. You can prove, in particular, that theta is consistent. You can also prove that I am the Pope, um, and, uh, and the moon is made of green cheese and stuff like that. So, 
The set th if our set theoretic axioms are logically consistent, then we'll never be sure about it, because the Gödel's second incompleteness theorem prevents us from knowing. So the ZFC axioms, they've existed for about 110 years now. Nobody has yet found deduced a contradiction from them, so we're optimistic, but we'll never be sure that they're OK. Um, that is a bit of a problem. So when we're founding mathematics, we want to build mathematics on a foundation that's firm and solid. Gödel says that we'll never be sure that set theory is firm and solid. Oh well. <laughs> OK, so, um, so that's a background to the ZFC axioms I'm going to be presenting. I'll present them as I need them. Uh, and that will be intended partly to make the point that uh, we are being really cautious, not introducing axioms until we do need them. Um, and I'll also uh, say from time to time uh, which of the axioms are, might pose the biggest problem for logical consistency. Uh, so if ZFC does get proved to be inconsistent in 2050 or whenever, um, I'll indicate which of the axioms it might be that has blown our set theory out of the water.